I lied. I said at the end of the last video that this video was going to be a newbie's guide to processing raw files in Darktable. But as I was planning that video, it occurred to me, there's this other thing that just catches every new Darktable user out. And it's this idea that you import a raw file, it looks fantastic in the light table view, but the moment you double click on it and go into the dark room, suddenly it all looks washed out. What's the deal with that? Well, that's what we're gonna address in this video. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 139 of Understanding Darktable. This catches almost every new Darktable user out. You go to your import dialog box, you find some images that you want to import, which in my case is going to be these few images here. And I'm just going to throw these in EP139 in my test shots folder. Copy and import. They import into the light table view and we can see they look as you would expect them to look. They look very similar to the in-camera JPEG and they look the way they looked on the rear of the camera at the time that I took them. And we can see that I've got both raw files and JPEGs here because I shoot raw plus JPEG. Now, if I was to double click one of these JPEGs and go into the darkroom view, it looks fine. But if I go to one of the raw files, suddenly it looks different. The colors are desaturated and there's not as much contrast. Why? Well, to understand that, you need to understand that when you are shooting RAW and you press the little triangle button on the back of your camera to play back the images that you've shot, you are not seeing a RAW image. There is no such thing as a RAW image. There is only a RAW file. In order for your camera to display the contents of that raw file on the LCD screen on the back of your camera. The camera needs an image processor, and all cameras have that. With my Sony, it's a Bions processor, or it could be an Exmor processor, depending on you know, the vintage of the camera that you're shooting with. And there are a bunch of other image processing chips that camera manufacturers build into their cameras. But the point is, that to display that raw file, your camera's image processing chip has to read that raw file and generate an in-camera JPEG. That's what you're seeing when you look at your photo on the back of your camera. You are seeing a JPEG rendering of the raw data. You're not seeing the raw image. There is no such thing. Now, the reason I explain all of this to you is because when you import your raw files into Darktable, the light table view is still giving you the in-camera JPEG preview as the thumbnail. Right, So the moment you then double click on that raw file and you jump into the darkroom view, Darktable says, oh, we no longer need the in-camera JPEG that was generated by the camera's image processor because the user has just told me that he wants to, or she, wants to process the raw data. So if we look at the history stack, and this is something else that catches a lot of new users out, we can see a whole bunch of steps that have been taken with the raw data. But this is all of the steps that are required by any 
display device to actually turn that raw data into something that you, as a human being, can view with your eyes. So we can see that there is the original, and if we click on that, that's what you get. Now you could try to start processing from this point, but I can tell you now, raw black and white point, demosaic, input color profile, output color profile, display encoding, white balance, highlight reconstruction, color calibration, yeah, at least up to there, all of those steps will reappear before you can do another thing. Uh, just to try and demonstrate that, let's just go to the tone equalizer and do something like that. Yep, yeah, called it, up to the orientation. Every, all of those things have to happen for a raw file to be turned into an image that you can view, whether it's on a computer monitor or whatever other device you might be looking at. These things have to happen. In most other software, like Adobe Lightroom and you know any other raw image processing software you care to name, all of those steps are also happening. They're just hidden from the user. Darktable shows you everything. I've used the analogy in earlier videos in this series that Darktable is like the European sports car with the clear perspex hood that lets you see the engine. You know, you get to see everything that's going on, even if some of it you can't get rid of. It has to exist for the raw file to be displayed as a, an image on screen. Okay, so let's just reset that. So this is now, okay, and I do need to address this. You're wondering, why is there exposure? Why is there filmic RGB? That comes down to a couple of preferences that I've got set within my instance of Darktable. Please don't get hung up on that. That's just the way I have my system set at this point in time. Okay, so all of these things have to happen so that you can see the raw data. But this is your basic starting point. Well, no, I could actually come back to color calibration. That would be your raw starting point if we removed exposure and filmic RGB. So I wanted you to understand that when you import a raw file into the light table view and it looks just like the JPEG and you think, fantastic, and you come into the dark room and suddenly it doesn't look like the JPEG anymore, dark table is not broken, nothing went wrong. That's just how dark table works because it assumes if you shot raw, then you actually have an interest in processing the raw data. And it assumes that you want to start from ground zero with no you know, pre-existing saturation or contrast or levels adjustments made to the image. You want the raw data. You want to start you know, with a blank sheet of paper, as it were, and actually process your file. So, I hope that makes sense, and in the next video, we really will do the Newbie's Guide to Processing Raw Files in Darktable. Before I go, you will recall, if you've been watching my channel for a while, that when I went to Alaska last year, I got to borrow a Tamron 150-500 zoom lens. I loved that lens, so much so that I went and bought one. And I got it about, oh, about a month ago, I guess. And I really haven't had a, a lot of opportunity to go out and use it for anything serious yet, uh, but I am very much looking forward to giving it a good workout. This image of this kangaroo was taken well, actually, it's a wallaby, it's not a kangaroo, but let's not get into semantics. 
Uh, this was just taken in my neighbourhood where Kath and I now live. Um, just went out for a drive one afternoon and just happened to see a few wallabies, so took a few shots. Uh, and as you can see, that's at 500 mil. Um, I don't know that it's actually all that sharp, but I think that's just because I was a bit, you know, I was shooting handheld at 500 mil and only at a 200th of a second where I probably should have been shooting at a 500th of a second. If we take the one over the focal length rule as a guide. So yeah, so anyway, uh, looking forward to giving that lens a good workout when I get the chance. Okay, that is going to do it. I am sure that some of you new users will have some questions. Please sing out down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.